Bethan's kitchen and garden. Today I'm in the kitchen as I'm making cider. Now I haven't made cider before. My husband's made it a couple of times, but we never got to sample it because um, it leaked out of the bottom of the barrel for some reason. The spigot broke off and then um, and it was all over the floor, which was very sad. So I'm gonna attempt to make it today. I've got a recipe um, in this book that I'm going to follow and um, I'll talk you through it. Now, I've had a load of apples from my sister's garden. Um, ironically, my sister is not interested in gardening or growing veg or anything like that, but um, she has managed to produce a fine crop of apples, whereas I, who love gardening and growing my own produce, can't produce as many apples they just get infected. So thankfully my sister had um, some apples for me so I brought them back and what I did was I froze them so they look a bit weird but um, when you're making any sort of wine or cider from fruit um, I always find it's really handy if you freeze the fruit first because um, the freezing process breaks down the cell walls which then gives you more flavour or more taste in your um, cider or wine. So it tastes more of the fruit that it's meant to taste of. That's been my experience anyway. But um, I'm waffling now. Let me show you the equipment I've got and um, the process I'm going to do. So here's my book with um, a very handy display of instructions. I uh, am always a big fan of diagrams and then I've got my uh, food processor here my apples here like I said they do look a bit weird they look more like russets now but before they were quite firm whereas now they're very squishy and then over here I've got my muslin bag with um, a bucket underneath uh, for when um, I've put all the apples in the food processor and I'm squeezing the last of the juice out. I've got my funnel and then I've got my demijohn with sterilising liquid in it at the moment and some cotton wool which I'll explain later. Before I put the apples into the food processor I just wanted to quickly say that I froze these apples whole and then when they had been defrosting for about an hour and a half to two hours my husband called all the um, middles out because I read an article once that said that the pips of apples contain arsenic so you need to be careful and make sure you call your apples before you put them in the cider or at least that's my um, interpretation of it so that's what I'm doing it doesn't say to do that in my book but um, I don't want to risk having arsenic poisoning so um, I've caught my apples already so let's get them in the food processor and get making some apple juice So I'm just going to squeeze as many apples as I can into the food processor and then mix it all up so it's a bit of a pulp and then put the pulp into the muslin bag and then squeeze it all out. I didn't want to put all this in there because it'd be really hard to squeeze through the muslin bag and I'm hoping I will have enough um, liquid for my recipe I need four liters I think I might have more than four liters in which case I'm gonna go around the village and see if anyone's got fruit out um, because at this time of year lots of people have um, apples at the end of their drive like help yourself so if that's the case 
I'll, um, I might go and gather some and make another batch but um, we'll see how far we get with this so before I do any more I'm just gonna um, rinse out my demi on to get rid of the sterilizing solution so You want to make sure you want to make sure that the um, bottle is well rinsed out because you don't want your hard work then tasting of um, disinfectant so I'm now gonna move this into the sink and start to um, strain the apple pulp So I'm happy to say I ended up with the four litres that I needed. Well, I've got four and a bit. So I've taken the bit and put it to one side and I think I might freeze it and um, see how many apples I can get and maybe make another batch of cider. But um, I've got enough here. So I, I was pleased with that. It did take a lot to strain all those apples, I must say. And I do have a um, apple turning, what do you call them? Apple press, that's the word. Um, in my allotment shed, buried somewhere. So if I make cider again, I think I'm going to dig that out. Because that'll probably be a lot easier than the way I just did it. The way I just did it is usually how I do it for the wine. But there's not such a vast quantity of fruit with the wine so anyway let's get on with the cider so i'm going to put this into the demi -jean. five grams of yeast the recipe said champagne yeast but this is cider yeast so I'm assuming cider yeast should do the job just as much as champagne yeast so I'll add that in there and it says on here uh, sprinkle sachet onto surface and wait for 15 minutes then stir so what I'll do is um, I'll wait 15 minutes and then I'll use um, a wooden spoon, you know, upside down, use the handle to do the stirring. And then you put the cotton wool on there, I'm not sure why, for two days until the heavy ferment stops and then you replace it with the uh, airlock. So I did almost forget one crucial step, which is to add the sugar. Now I should have added the sugar um, when 
when the juice was in the bucket because um, it just would have been easier to stir it. There's nothing wrong with adding it now, nothing at all. It'll just be harder for me to stir to make sure the sugar goes all the way through. But I'll give you my best effort. So here goes. the sugar will sink to the bottom and you can just check the bottom to see if there's any sugar and if it is just agitate the bottle until the sugar is dissolved it should be good now seamless and finally we bung the uh, cotton wool which, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. It's not just going to fall into the cider. But um, we'll see what's occurred in the next two days. Hello! It's actually been a couple of weeks now since I filmed that beginning bit. And um, the cider is here in the demijohn. It's... Um, well, I don't know what to say about it, really. It's looking quite cloudy. It looks okay. There's no air at all going through the airlock. So I'm not sure what to say about that. But um, hopefully it will be all right. The only thing I did was remove the cotton wool and put the airlock in place. And that was, that was it, really. So, um, yeah, as I said, about two weeks has passed. In the book, it said... Um, it was ready to drink after two weeks, but I'm not so sure about that. So I'm going to leave it for a little bit longer. And um, actually, my daughter is um, three at the end of the month and my family are coming up for that. So maybe I'll, um, I'll bottle this up for then and we can all have a sample of, um, of the cider made from my sister's apple tree. Um, so maybe I'll do a part two of that when we're all sampling the cider. We'll see how the day goes. Um, but that's it from me for today. That's how I made the cider. Well, I hope it's cider. Otherwise, it might just be um, rotten apple juice. But um, let, let's hope it's cider anyway. Um, so thank you for watching. And um, if you liked it, then thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing. And all I can say about this cider is hopefully it's a lovely job. <laughs>